when we discuss the work done during the contraction or the expansion of a gas, we implicitly assume that the external pressure exerted on the moving wall in the cylinder is greater or smaller than the pressure of the gas in the system, but this difference is infinitesimally small. This infinitesimal difference is enough to move the wall by the net force of the unbalanced pressure forces acting on its both sides. For if the external pressure was much greater or smaller than that of the gas in the system, the movable wall could move fast enough to generate flows and whirls in the contracting or expanding gas. As a result, the sudden change in the volume of the gas would disturb the stationary state of the gas, that is the equilibrium of the thermodynamic system. Therefore, the thermodynamic states which the system is passing through while it is taken from its initial state to its final one, cannot be considered as equilibrium states. However, the equation of state for ideal gas only describes its behavior in equilibrium, and it is not clear at all what the functional relationship is between the state variables of an ideal gas in such a process, and how to describe the evolution of a non-equilibrium system in the state space. We also assume that the temperature of a thermal reservoir or a heat bath and that of a thermodynamic system in contact with the heat bath are almost the same for similar reasons. If the difference between the temperature THB of the heat bath and the temperature T of the substance in the system is infinitesimal, whether we warm or cool the system, then the thermal gradient between the system and its surroundings is small enough to produce any convective flow in the gas disturbing its equilibrium. If these conditions hold, then the changes in the thermodynamic state of a system are infinitely slow, and all the states which the system passes through are equilibrium states. In other words, the system maintains equilibrium during the infinitely slow thermodynamic process. It evolves through a series of equilibrium or static states, in which the equation of state can be applied. Such a thermodynamic process is called quasi-static process, where each state has only an infinitesimal deviation from the previous one during the infinitely long course between the initial and the final states of the system. In equilibrium, a thermodynamic system has well-defined values of macroscopic properties such as the temperature and the pressure of the system at each instant of the process. Therefore, a quasi-static process is represented by a well-defined path in the state space of the system. The equation of state can also be used to determine the functional relationship between the state variables describing macroscopic properties along the path of the equilibrium states. The path of a quasi-static process always lies on the surface determined by the equation of state in the state space. Here the equation stating that fx is equal to zero represents an arbitrary equation of state, which depends on the state vector x of the system. This equation determines an n-minus one-dimensional hypersurface in the n-dimensional state space. Because the initial state 1 and the final state 2 of the thermodynamic process are equilibrium states and the equation of states holds in equilibrium, the states 1 and 2 are on the surface. In a quasi-static process the series of states connecting the initial and the final states are also equilibrium states and they are also on the surface. Any finite difference between the state variables in two different states can be connected such a series of states on the surface, which have infinitesimal differences in their state variables. Quasi-static processes are idealized processes occurring infinitely slowly such that equilibrium holds at all times, but in practice such processes can be done slowly enough that the system remains at thermodynamic equilibrium at each instant, while it changes over a finite time. Since quasi-static processes cannot be completely realized for any finite change of the system, all processes in nature are non-quasi-static. However, we can study many different thermodynamic processes by approximating them as a quasi-static one, and draw important conclusions on their nature. We have already mentioned that in quasi-static processes the internal pressure and the external pressure are essentially the same on both sides of the moving wall separating the system from the surroundings. In other words, the external and internal pressure forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Then the work W done on the system by the external pressure forces is equal to minus the work W prime done on the surroundings by the internal ones. Therefore, the first law can also be formulated with the equation stating that the heat Q exchanged between a thermodynamic system and the surroundings is equal to the difference between the internal energy U2 in its final state and the internal energy U1 in its initial state, plus the work W prime done by the internal pressure forces. Explicitly, the heat Q is given by U2 minus U1 plus the integral of the internal pressure P over the volume V of the system from its initial volume V1 and its final volume V2. We can state that some amount of the heat absorbed by the system increases its internal energy, and the rest of the heat is used to expand the system and do pressure volume work on the surroundings. If there is no heat exchange between the system and the surroundings separated by an adiabatic wall, 
then the equation reduces to the form where the change delta U in the internal energy of the system is equal to the pressure volume work W done on the system, or minus the pressure work W prime done by the system. In both the cases, the mechanical work is given by minus the integral of the pressure P of the working substance over the volume between the initial volume V1 and the final volume V2 of the system. Since we talk about a quasi-static process, the pressure of the working substance in the surroundings and the pressure of the gas in the system remain equal during the process. As a result, the pressure P in both the integrals is equal to the gas pressure, which is a positive semi-definite function of the volume V of the gas. If an ideal gas is compressed and its initial volume is greater than its final volume, the value of the definite integral of the pressure with respect to the volume is negative. Then the change in the internal energy of the gas is positive, as we expect since the work is done on the gas. If the ideal gas expands and its initial volume is smaller than its final volume, the value of the definite integral of the pressure with respect to the volume is positive. Then the change in the internal energy of the gas is negative, as we expect since the work is done by the gas. We have seen that processes undergoing in thermodynamic systems can be represented by paths connecting the initial and the final states of the system in the state space. There is a special case of thermodynamic processes, where the initial and the final states of the system are the same. A process that eventually returns a system to its initial state is called a cyclic process. In the end of the process all the state variables, that is the macroscopic properties of the system have the same value which they had in the initial state. As a result, the path of a cyclic process is a closed path in the state space. In the n-dimensional state space of a thermodynamic system the point P represents the initial state of the system, and the closed path labeled by calligraphic P indicates that the system leaves its initial state and returns to it. The concept of cyclic process can be generalized to a connected sequence of thermodynamic processes, where the initial state of the first process and the sequence is the same as the final state of the last process in the sequence. Such a sequence of thermodynamic processes is known as thermodynamic cycle. Here we can see three distinct thermodynamic states represented by the points P1, P2, and P3 in the n-dimensional state space, which are connected with the path calligraphic P. The point P1 denotes the initial and the final state of the system, and the states P2 and P3 are the intermediate states in the thermodynamic cycle. A typical thermodynamic cycle consists of a succession of thermodynamic processes exchanging heat and work between the system and the surroundings, while varying state variables such as pressure, volume and temperature, and eventually returning the system to its initial state. In the thermodynamic cycle, the working substance in the system acts as means of transformation of energy into work. This cycle is important as it allows for the continuous operation, where heat is converted into work or vice versa by repeating the cycle. Such repeated thermodynamic cycles can be seen in the case of a moving piston in engines or the expansion and the compression of the working fluid in refrigerators. Two primary classes of thermodynamic cycles are power cycles and refrigeration cycles. Power cycles are cycles receiving heat as input energy and producing work as output energy, in other words converting heat into work. Therefore power cycles are also called heat engine. Refrigeration cycles transfer heat from low to high temperatures using work input, in other words they convert work into heat, and are also called heat pump. Thermodynamic cycles can be categorized in yet another way, as closed and open cycles. In closed thermodynamic cycles, the working substance returns to its original condition at the end of the cycle and it is recirculated in its final state, which is the same as its initial state at the beginning of the next cycle. For example the working fluid in refrigerators and air conditioners is driven around a closed thermodynamic cycle between a heat source and a heat sink held at different temperatures. In open cycles, the working substance is renewed at the end of each cycle instead of being recirculated. For example, in internal combustion engines, gases produced in the combustion are exhausted and replaced by fresh air fuel mixture at the end of each cycle. We have seen that the internal energy of a thermodynamic system is a state function, that is a unique function of the thermodynamic state. If the state of the system is described by the state vector x in the n-dimensional state space, then the internal energy U can be evaluated at the state vector x. Since the initial and the final states of a system operating in a thermodynamic cycle are the same, the internal energy of the system is the same both at the beginning and the end of the cycle. If the state of the system is described by the state vector x at the beginning of the cycle, the system leaves this initial state evolving along the path calligraphic P and returns to the state x at the end of the cycle. Although the internal energy of the system can change in the intermediate states along the path, it will have its initial value at the end of the cycle. As a result, 
the change delta U in the internal energy is zero, and the first law can be formulated as the equation stating that the sum of the heat Q exchanged between the system and the surroundings, and the work W done on the system by the surroundings vanishes in a thermodynamic cycle. The first law can also be formulated by stating that the heat Q absorbed by the system is equal to the work W prime done by the system performing a thermodynamic cycle. As we have seen, the operation of a heat engine is a typical example for a thermodynamic cycle, where heat is converted into mechanical work. The first law applied for a thermodynamic cycle can describe the energy balance in such a conversion performed by heat engines. However, in the operation cycle of a heat engine, not all the heat can be turned into work because some heat must also be released. This schematic diagram shows the exchange of energy in the thermodynamic cycle of a heat engine, where the engine is a part of the theoretical model describing the conversion of heat to work. In the diagram we can see a high temperature reservoir or a hot source delivering the heat QH to the heat engine. The heat engine converts the delivered heat to the mechanical work W prime and releases the heat QC which is absorbed by a low temperature reservoir or a cold sink. The heat absorbed by the sink is considered as a loss of the energy delivered to the heat engine, since it is not converted to mechanical work. Although we used finite amounts of internal energy, heat, and work to formulate the first law of thermodynamics, the law can also be written in differential form. If dq is the infinitesimal amount of heat absorbed by a thermodynamic system and dw is the infinitesimal work done on the system, then the infinitesimal change du in the internal energy of the system is equal to dq plus dw. In the case of the pressure volume work done on a gas with the pressure p and the infinitesimal change dv in its volume, the change du in the internal energy of the gas is given by dq minus p times dv. Similarly, we can write that the infinitesimal heat dq absorbed by the system is equal to the infinitesimal change du in its internal energy, plus the infinitesimal work dw prime done by the system where the work dW prime done by an expanding gas can be written as P times dV. In order to study an infinitesimal amount of internal energy of a thermodynamic system, that is the differential of U as a function of the state vector of the system, we consider a general case. Let F be a function defined over the n-dimensional state space of a thermodynamic system, that is let F be a state function. This means that the value of F is determined if we specify the state vector X in the state space. Let us evaluate this function at another state, which is at an infinitesimally small distance from the original state in the state space. Then this state can be written as the state vector x plus the infinitesimal distance vector dx. We can say that we transform the initial state described by the state variables x1, x2, ellipsis, xn, to the final state described by the state variables x1 plus dx1, x2 plus dx2, ellipsis, xn plus dxn. Now we can write the differential of the function f as the difference between the function f evaluated at the state vector x plus the difference vector dx, and the function f evaluated at the state vector x. If the function f is differentiable with respect to the state variables, then this expression is the exact differential of the function f corresponding to the passage from the initial state to the final state. The exact differential of f can be written as the sum of the partial derivative of f with respect to the state variable xi with all the other state variables kept fixed, times the differential of xi, where the index i runs form 1 to n. If a thermodynamic system evolves from its initial state 1 to its final state 2, then we can determine the difference delta f in the function f evaluated at the state vector x2 in its final state and at the state vector x1 in its initial state. We can also obtain this difference by integrating the differential of the function f along the path representing the thermodynamic process of the system in the state space. If we substitute the exact differential of the function f into the path integral, then the difference delta f can be written as the sum of the integrals of the partial derivatives of the function f with respect to the state variables over the same state variables from the state 1 to the state 2. Since the difference in the function f depends only on the initial and the final states of the system, the integral and the sum of the integrals can only depend on these states and cannot depend on the path of the integration. If we choose another path connecting the states 1 and 2 in the state space, that is we let the system evolve from its initial state to its final state in another thermodynamic process, the difference delta f in the state function f still is the same as the one obtained in the original process. Since the function f is an arbitrary state function, these findings also hold for the internal energy of a thermodynamic system. Then the fact that the internal energy U is a state function but the heat Q and work W are not, can be expressed mathematically by stating that the differential DU is an exact differential, while the infinitesimal quantities DQ and DW are inexact differentials. As a result, 
the first law of thermodynamics can be formulated as follows. The sum of the infinitesimal amount of heat absorbed by a thermodynamic system and the infinitesimal work done on the system is an exact differential, that is the exact differential of the internal energy of the system. Then du is equal to delta Q plus delta W, where du denotes the exact differential of the internal energy, and delta Q and delta W denote the inexact differentials of heat and work respectively. We can also write that delta Q is equal to du plus delta W prime, where delta W prime is the infinitesimal work done by the system. We normally use the notation delta for an infinitesimal quantity to emphasize that it is an inexact differential, otherwise we just denote any infinitesimal difference with d. In the context of thermodynamics we already know that the internal energy is a state function and it has an exact differential, whereas heat and work are so-called path functions depending on the path of the thermodynamic process in the state space, and they have inexact differentials. If we keep this fact in mind, we can just use the notation d for any infinitesimal thermodynamic quantity throughout the lecture. We have already determined the work W' prime done by an expanding gas. If the heat Q is absorbed by an ideal gas in the chamber of a cylinder sealed with a piston, then the gas evolves from its initial state with the pressure P1 and the volume V1 to the its final state with the pressure P2 and the volume V2. The pressure volume work W prime done by the gas is equal to the integral of the changing gas pressure P over the volume V of the gas from the initial volume V1 to the final volume V2. If the gas is expanding, that is V2 is greater than V1, then the pressure volume work is positive. We can illustrate the expansion of the gas by plotting the pressure volume diagram of the gas, where the states 1 and 2 of the gas are connected with the path calligraphic P representing the process of expansion. Then the area of the plane figure with the corner points labeled by the letters V1, V2, 2, and 1 under the curve calligraphic P gives the pressure volume work done by the expanding gas. For another process represented by the path calligraphic P prime, where the change in the temperature of the gas is different during its expansion, the area under the curve calligraphic P will be different. As a result, the pressure volume work will also be different. This is another demonstration of the fact that the work done by the gas depends on both the states 1 and 2 in the path connecting these states. Now we determine the area under the curve calligraphic P. First we can compute the area of the rectangle O, V2, 2 and P2, which is equal to P2 times V2. Then we add the area of the plane figure with the corner points P1, P2, 2 and 1 to the area of the rectangle. This area is given by minus the integral of the volume V with respect to the pressure P from the pressure P1 to the pressure P2, which is positive since dP is negative for expansion. Finally we subtract the area of the rectangle O, V1, 1 and P1 from the sum, where the area is equal to P1 times V1. As a result, the pressure volume work W prime done by the expanding gas can be written as P2 times V2, minus P1 times V1, minus the integral of the volume V of the gas with respect to the pressure P from the initial pressure P1 to the final pressure P2. In the original formula, we computed the pressure volume work W prime by integrating the gas pressure with respect to the volume, which is a convenient method if the pressure is constant. Then we only need to multiply the constant pressure by the change delta V in the volume of the gas. In the new formula, we need to evaluate the integral of the volume with respect to the pressure, which does not seem to be a convenient method since the volume of the gas is changing for an expanding gas. However, the new formula helps us to introduce a new thermodynamic variable describing the state of a system if we apply the first law of thermodynamics. The first law states that the heat Q absorbed by the gas is equal to the change U2 minus U1 in the internal energy of the gas, plus the work W prime done by the gas. Then we can write that the heat Q is equal to the quantity of U2 plus P2 times V2, minus the quantity of U1 plus P1 times V1, minus the integral of the volume V of the gas with respect to the pressure P from the pressure P1 to the pressure P2. By applying the equation obtained for the first law, we can introduce a new thermodynamic quantity called enthalpy. If a thermodynamic system is in a given state described by the state variables pressure P, volume V, temperature T and so on, we can also determine its internal energy U as a function of the given state variables. Then the enthalpy H of a substance in the system is defined by the internal energy U of the substance, plus the product of the pressure P and the volume V of the substance. We can see from its definition that enthalpy has the unit of energy, and its SI unit is joule. Before applying this definition for the first law, we introduce another thermodynamic quantity called technical work done by the system in a thermodynamic process changing its pressure from the initial pressure P1 to the final pressure P2. 
the technical work W prime tech is defined by minus the integral of the volume V of the substance in the system with respect to the pressure P of the substance from the pressure P1 to the pressure P2. By using the definition, we can also determine an infinitesimal amount of technical work done by the system, which is equal to minus the volume V times the infinitesimal change in the pressure P of the system. Now we can substitute these definitions into the first law for a system doing pressure volume work. Here the first two terms in the right-hand side are the enthalpy of the system in its initial state 2 and its final state 1 respectively, whereas the last term is the technical work. Then the first law of thermodynamics states that some amount of the heat absorbed by the system increases the enthalpy of the system, and the rest of the heat is converted into technical work. That is the heat Q absorbed by the system is equal to the difference H2 minus H1 of the enthalpy of the system, plus the technical work W prime tech done by the system. If we keep the original form of the last term, we can write that the heat Q is given by the final enthalpy H2 minus the initial enthalpy H1, minus the integral of the volume V with respect to the pressure P from the initial pressure P1 to the final pressure P2. This form can also be used to write the first law in differential form stating that an infinitesimal change in the enthalpy H is equal to the infinitesimal amount of heat Q absorbed by the system, plus the pressure P of the system times the infinitesimal change in the volume V of the system. By definition, enthalpy is a state function. If the state of a thermodynamic system is given by the state vector x in the n-dimensional state space, then the internal energy u of the system is also given in that state as a unique function of the state vector x. This is the case for the enthalpy as well. Since the enthalpy h of the system is a unique function of the state of the system, we can determine it by fixing the state vector x. As a result, the differential of enthalpy in the first law is also an exact differential. It depends on the thermodynamic process which form of the first law expressed in the terms of internal energy or enthalpy is more applicable. In the case of isochoric processes where the volume of the thermodynamic system is constant, the infinitesimal change dV in the volume of the system vanishes. As a result, the second term in the right-hand side of the differential form of the first law expressed in the terms of the infinitesimal change in internal energy is equal to zero. By integrating the result, we find that the heat Q exchanged between the system and the surroundings is equal to U2 minus U1, that is the change in the internal energy of the system. In the case of isobaric processes where the pressure of the system is constant, the infinitesimal change dP in the pressure of the system vanishes. Then we can drop the second term in the right-hand side of the differential form of the first law expressed in the terms of the infinitesimal change in enthalpy. By integrating the result, we can see that the heat Q exchanged between the system and the surroundings is equal to H2 minus H1, that is the change in the enthalpy of the system. In other words, the heat absorbed by a system with a constant volume is equal to the increase in the internal energy of the system, whereas the absorbed heat is equal to the increase in the enthalpy of the system provided its pressure is constant. We can illustrate the importance of the technical work by considering the thermodynamic cycle in steam engines. The idealized cycle of a steam engine consists of four thermodynamic processes, where the working substance is a gas or vapor pushed and expanded by a moving piston in a cylinder. In the first process, the starting position of the piston is at the wall with the two valves of the cylinder. The intake valve is open and the exhaust valve is closed, which allows the gas to enter the cylinder with the constant pressure P1 and move the piston. When the chamber between the wall and the piston expands to a given volume V1, the intake valve closes preventing the gas from entering the chamber. The work done by the gas is given by the product of the constant pressure P1 of the gas and the change V1 in its volume. In the second process, the chamber is closed but the gas expands and moves the piston further increasing the volume of the chamber to the volume V2. Since the gas is not allowed to enter the chamber, the pressure of the gas drops to the pressure P2 during its expansion. Then the pressure volume work W' prime done by the expanding gas is equal to the integral of the gas pressure P with respect to its volume V from the volume V1 to the volume V2. In the third process, the exhaustion valve opens and the gas is pushed out by the piston at constant pressure, reducing its volume in the chamber to zero. Then the work done on the gas is given by the product of the constant pressure P2 and the change V2 in the volume of the chamber. That is the work done by the gas is equal to minus P2 times V2. In the fourth process, the pressure can be equalized in the chamber and the surroundings by closing the exhaustion valve and opening the intake valve. Then the pressure of the gas will increase from the pressure P2 to the pressure P1 at the intake valve, while the volume of the chamber remains zero. Since there is no change in the volume, no work is done. In the four processes repeated in the cycle, 
the gas is the working substance while it enters and leaves the cylinder, changing its mass continuously. The work done by the steam engine is the technical work W prime tech which is given by P1 times V1, plus W prime, minus P2 times V2. This expression can be written as P1 times V1, minus P2 times V2, minus the integral of the pressure P with respect to the volume V from V1 to V2. By applying partial integration, we obtain minus the integral of the volume V with respect to the pressure P from P1 to P2. In the pressure volume diagram of the cycle, the four processes are represented by the sections from the point P1 to the point 1, from the point 1 to the point 2, from the point 2 to the point P2, and from the point P2 to the point P1, respectively. We can see that the technical work is equal to minus the integral of the volume V with respect to the pressure P from the pressure P1 to the pressure P2, which is the area of a plane figure with the corner points P1, P2, 2, and 1. In the process represented by the path between the points 1 and 2, the mass of the gas is constant and it absorbs the heat Q, increasing its enthalpy by H2 minus H1. 